Well, just a bit further to the drop-off point, and then you never have to think of me ever again. Won't that just be swell? And you... Well, you can continue to carry that lovely torch for your ex-girlfriend that nearly got you killed. <laughs> I am angry, actually. So good of you to notice. Because you could have died and it would have been for naught. But you still can't see it. You still refuse to see sense. Oh, you're fine, are you? Then you'll have no issue rowing the last few hundred meters all on your own, yes? Mm -hmm. Tell me again how it was no big deal and you're fine, hmm? You can't even row both oars together, and I know you have the training to do so. Or gods. At least I would hope that you do. Considering you're on this whole sailing adventure, or you were, before you stupidly sunk your own ship doing God's only knows what below deck. I never said that I cared, but not a heartless monster, either. Oi! Watch where you're going, you hedonistic monsters! They nearly took us out. I think I'm entitled, within reason, to shout what I like. You humans are all the same. No matter the time, no matter the supposed innovations, all the same. Just in a shinier package. Ugh, oh, damn it all. Here. Give me the oars. I am aware that I am no longer rowing towards shore. You, you see that massive dock to the far right? If we go inland now, there are thousands of tourists who have just arrived, and I simply cannot risk that level of exposure. Well... If you bothered to pay any sort of attention to the world around you, rather than hiding in your mind and pining over what you simply cannot change, you'd see that my camouflage isn't working properly. See, see the shimmer on my left leg? The way you can almost make out the outlines of scales? I'm afraid someone I fed upon had something in their system. I should have known when I saw the sort of people on that ship that there might be a risk of drugs being in at least several of their systems, but I was distracted by someone who needed my help. I rushed, and now we have to find someplace safe to wait until my body can process whatever... until my body can process whatever it was. Must have been a fuck ton for it to affect my ability to shift forms and avoid reverting when in contact with water. I just, I don't. That is, unless you'd like to try your luck swimming the rest of the way. You're welcome to, but having observed you for a bit now, I believe you may have hyperextended your right shoulder, or uh, perhaps there, just beneath the arm. Tear as major as it were. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> Here we are. This sea cave will simply have to do as we bide our time. Now then. I'm going to ask you this. And I need you to be completely honest with me. I know you've been attempting to go on as though nothing more than your ship was lost today, but I know you must have been injured to act so foolishly. No. 
I apologize. I, I do not mean to offend you. I understand that my personality can be a bit grating. Look, when you've been through what I have, it's only natural to lose trust and faith in people. No, no, don't distract me. I know what you're doing. Asking me questions as though you give any amount of care about me or my story. The point is... The point is, I think you must have hit your head at some point during the accident. I, I can see a bit of trauma on the left side of your skull here, just beneath the surface. I am able to see many things that humans cannot, and that is not all owned to the whole vampiric thing. I... Okay, you know how sharks and any other larger predatory fish have methods to detect injured creatures. Right. Right. It, it aids them in their hunting. Well, as a mermaid, I do have those abilities. The, the way something moves through water creates various frequencies. These low pulses that are able to travel much further through water than we can hear on land. And, and an injured creature has a different frequency slightly altered than one who was healthy and strong. When I was swimming and I heard you, your, your frequency wasn't quite right. And then, once I was able to observe you on that god-awful raft, and for even longer in this little shit-show boat, I noticed where you were cradling yourself. Well, the seeing in regard to your skull, that part is more the vampiric portion, but also from my studies with someone who helped me adjust after I was betrayed and sired against my will. It's, it's, it's not all owed to what, to what happened to me. God. I spent all night with that woman. Being enchanted by her smile, her laugh, the, the way she would look at me that extra moment longer. I felt as though she truly saw me. It was, it was a feeling I had never known. And looking back, I suppose that's what she counted on. God, she must have seen me coming from miles away. I'd been coming to shore for a year or so by that time, against the wishes of my father, Poseidon, and I... Yes, I do mean that, Poseidon. He's the father of the creatures of the seas, at least in this part of the world, but my mother, Yamaya, she insisted that I be allowed more freedom to explore. She attempted to explain to Father that keeping me hidden away would only cause me to long for the shore even more. And, and so, against his wishes, I began to explore. My auntie, Oshun, she, she promised to keep an eye on me during my times exploring. She was the one who was able to guide me, and as father settled and the storms of the seas slowed, there was peace again. For the better part of a year, there was peace, and I got to fall in love with a whole new world, with your world. But what I didn't understand, what none of us understood, really, this world, your world, 
has teeth. There are creatures here, living in the shadows that even humans are unaware of. You all have come to believe that the myths and legends are simply fun, fictional tales to tell around campfires. But, but as with many things, there are kernels of truth beneath every story passed down from one generation to the next. And so it was that I went from a happy girl learning about the human world, about different creatures and traditions and dances. So many beautiful dances to music that connected back to our world as well. But it was also so very different. I went from that joyful heart to this. The night I crawled my way back into the waves, still bleeding from the wound on my neck where she had bitten me, it was the night all of that began to die in me. All that wonder, curiosity, and enchantment substituted with fear, abandonment, and and a thirst that I tried so hard to ignore. I didn't want to become a killer, a hunter of those creatures. It was my sworn duty to protect, but she gave me no choice. She took everything from me, and for what? Because she refused to control her own urges, I lost my life. I lost who I was, who I was meant to become. No, no, it is hopeless and don't you dare to insinuate otherwise. What do you know? You don't know what you speak of. You, you have no understanding of what true loss is. You lost your love. I lost my home, my family, my life. How can I ever be trusted to become a proper princess and a ruler when I have to feed on the life of others to stay strong? No. I tried. Gods, did I try to just get by on our usual diet. You know, the simple things. Smaller fish, my favorite sea vegetables, oysters, things of that nature. Things that I could properly consume, but every time I attempted to eat, pain was excruciating. Yeah, I, I, I did. For weeks. <laughs> and after weeks of hiding out in a sea cave, not much unlike this one, I was forced to drain an injured leopard shark. It, it wasn't my intention. I, I went to aid her, but as I got closer, as, as I could smell her blood in the water or something, else overtook me. And I will never get her cries, her fear and bewilderment out of my mind. No, I wish that I could say she was the last, but far from it. Once I fed, once I drained her blood for the first time, 
There was, there was no stopping it. It was like standing in front of an oncoming 90-foot wave, acting as though it were but a ripple. That, that wall is going to come crashing down, and you are fully at the mercy of the sea. As I was at the mercy of my thirst. <laughs> you would think. You would think with my parentage being the gods and protectors of the sea. But, but there was nothing to be done. There are some things in this world even gods cannot separate. Word reached them as to what had happened to me. But I could not bear to face them. I... I could not control myself around sharks, seals, sea otters. How foolish it would have been for me to return to our kingdom, to my home, filled with those whose blood I was actually craving. My mother, Imaya, she, she has her hands in many pots, as my father would. There's, there's magic she's privy to that only the gods of Yoruba have been able to attain. Their willingness to share in magics is what makes them unlike any others. But of course, it is from them that some of these creatures, these things that prey in the shadows, were able to take magics meant for good, for creation, and not destruction. For them to take them and twist them into things like lichens, vampires, even many demonic forms have come from the misappropriation of magics. As my mother took her own time on the shores to learn and discover, to attempt to better understand humans. She met another who had suffered. Another who had been tricked and ostracized herself as a result. Hundreds of years before my birth. Her name is Calypso. She became my mother's closest confidant in those many decades. She refused to join us. My mother offered her, time and again, a place in the kingdom, but Calypso, she always knew better. And so, as word traveled through the seas of the shadow with teeth, Calypso began to do something she swore she never would. She... She chose to search for me. In spite of having no idea initially, it was the daughter of her oldest and dearest friend who had been terrorizing the seas. I... I began to have these dreams, these visions of an island. They began to call to me in my waking state, which was difficult as my mind was constantly drowning in that never-ending thirst. But as the dreams she wove for me became more and more clear, I began to fight it. Something in me must have known that Freedom was just waiting there for me. That's, that's the thing about this curse, this vampirism. It protects itself. It has safeguards built into this dark magic, pieces that hide within you so that if need be, 
Her body can go on autopilot, seeking out the needed feedings without so much as a clue as to who you are draining. That is, if, if you fight it and wait too long to satiate yourself. No. It wasn't just a fish. I... I drained... I drained my best friend, Alexander. He... He had been tracking me for months. And I was continually slipping through his fingers like the snake I'd become. I longed to beg him to stop. But I feared even getting close enough to call out to him would spell his end. And I was right. I... I... I hadn't fed on anything larger than the smaller tuna that you find you find lingering in the back. Easy enough to pick off. But I wasn't myself. Even, even more so than usual. When Alexander arrived, we quarreled. And I hit him. I hit him right in the nose. That little trickle of blood into the water was all it took. My eyes... My eyes glazed over and I was gone. There was nothing but animalistic thirst left behind and I trained my closest friend. I remember coming to, seeing what I'd done, and I just swam. <laughs> I swam for ages, clutching his lifeless body to my chest. I just... I refused to leave him there, to be fed on by scavengers, but I couldn't risk taking him to the city. Taking myself, this monster, to where no one would know to defend themselves from me. How can you say that? How can you sit there and say I was not a monster when you have seen what I am capable of? You saw the carnage I left on that ship and that was with my thirst under control. Sorry. I appreciate what you are attempting to do, but I believe we both know I am not worthy of it. Shit. Alright, well, you're saved now at least, but. I must make myself scarce. What do you mean, see each other again? Did you not hear me, human? You are saved, free to go, untouched by my curse. Those humans who are drawn nearer by the second. So it's, it's the just, just a bit they will help you to shore, and you're free to return to your life. Release my wrist from your grasp, now. You could not wait to be rid of me. What, what has changed? I, I don't understand. I think there's someone in here. Fine. 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 I didn't mean to crowd Fine. you. You just wanted to Meet me in that bits. tavern in four days' time. I'll tell you the rest of my story. 
if you so wish. Just don't go sinking any more ships while you're on board, all right? I cannot always be there to save you, you fool. <laughs> we, um, we're really sorry to intrude, but... Wait, didn't you have someone with you a moment ago? I could have sworn I heard voices. Oh, well, I suppose there is a bit of an echo in here. Do you need help? But you only have one oar. You must have lost it drifting into the cave. It's a rookie mistake, but if you don't mind waiting while we look round, we can tow you and your boat back to shore once we're done. We heard tale of a creature who once took respite in this very cave. Well, no. We know mermaids are, are simply old wives' tales and fantasy, but why don't explore while we're here, you know? Just just give us just give us a few minutes and then we can go. On second thought, we should probably get out of here now before any more rocks fall. So strange, I thought they said that this place was completely short. Hmm. It's very strange. We were led to believe this cave was completely safe, but clearly not. <laughs> 